thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. For quite a while now on this channel, I have spoken about how important it is for a controller to have proportional control. That is, when you push the stick halfway, the robot moves at half of its maximum speed. But one of the things about engineering and science in general is always questioning the things that you think you know about the things you're doing. And so today, we're gonna test if proportional control is actually a thing that you really need in combat robot control by using an arcade joystick. These things are just four very, very clicky buttons underneath, so there is no way to do proportional control with one of these. The last time I looked at doing some kind of custom controller setup, I was using these PS3 controllers and built this absolutely ginormous receiver and ESC. In fact, it's so big that it would barely actually fit inside This Is A Party, my current ant weight. So this was just not really that good of a solution because it's just far too big. It forces an ant weight to be much, much larger than it needs to be and uh, I needed a solution to that, and that is where PCBWay comes in. PCBWay have provided an absolute stack of PCBs, so if this goes well, I can end up making a whole bunch of these. And as you can see, these PCBs are tiny in comparison to the last one. That's because this here is an ESP32 dev board. What we're gonna be using now is an ESP32 C3 Mini. So much, much, much smaller than the ESP32. To do that, we sacrifice a few features, but they're features that I don't particularly need in this particular setup. And I am going to be custom building both this, which is a receiver and ESC module, and also a transmitter and using the ESP32s to talk to each other and do the link between the controller, which is gonna be our arcade stick, uh, and this here tiny, tiny receiver. So you can see on the back side here, we have some SMD components. These are the same SMD components that I had in the last version because these SMD components work very, very well. And having these components on this PCB just makes life so much easier. Back when I first started Combat Robots, you couldn't just order PCBs online and I had to make stuff with individual components. I started with like an Arduino and a H-Bridge module and a voltage regulator module and just wire connecting everything between them. And it was just so bulky and messy. I ended up with a robot with a H-Bridge sticking out the top of it uh, that went into fights like that actually and did lose a fight by being hit on the H-Bridge and having a power shore and turning itself off effectively. Honestly awesome that you can just order PCBs nowadays and get something like this, which helps miniaturize all of that mess and all of that gump because we don't actually need an ESC board and a H-Bridge board. It's all connected together on this one thing. So the process of getting these boards together is gonna to be fairly similar to the last version. If you've seen that video, we're going to be SMDing our components onto here, which starts with some solder paste. It's going to be applying solder paste to each of these pads. You can run the solder paste kind of between them. It doesn't really matter that much because when it melts, as long as there's not too much, it will wick to where it needs to be and hold all the components down. And done. So the next trick is then to put on all of the components, which we'll start with the bigger stuff. These are the voltage regulators, and even they aren't all that big in the grand scheme of things. But they are bigger than the other components we'll put down in a minute. And there's all of those in. There are two more capacitors go but this is exactly the same process so we're going to skip to the good part and melt these boys. So they're going to go into an oven that has been preheated to a hundred degrees and then once we're in we're going to crank the heat up and now we crank the heat to 200 or just over 200 and bake until the solder melts. 
Ah, so that didn't go well. Out of six attempts, I've got two that I think are going to work. These guys here, you can see there's a slight discoloration to the boards. That's because I baked them too long, effectively. I think it's because my solder paste here is basically just dead, uh, and the flux in the solder paste didn't flow properly, which means that the solder didn't flow properly. And I basically tried too long and too hard to get these to work, and they've just burnt effectively. So we've got two other ones which I used different solder paste on. Hopefully these ones will actually work. And now that we've got those, we need a robot. All right, and here we go. We have our chassis pieces. And if we put it all vaguely together, it looks a little bit, I hope, like a Pac-Man ghost, especially once we put some good old googly eyes in the top here, like that. It's kind of there. It's a little bit of a homage more than anything else, but I thought it was a bit of a fun uh, design. So that's what we're going with, basically. This thing is fairly easy to put together, or at least should be. Uh, we're just having two N20s here. We have a battery that goes, or space in the back for batteries and electronics and stuff. We have our servo that sits here. Uh, and that's about it. We've got little clamps to hold everything together. So, uh, Okay, so we're not quite all the way together yet. Uh, the electronics still need to be actually hooked into the drive motors and the wedge still needs to be put on or the flipper still needs to be put on. But before that, I wanted to do a very quick systems test. I have my ESP32 over here that should be sending the signals and then the ESP32 that's going in the uh, robot. I also have an arcade button here. So I wanna do a quick systems test and also test which way round my servo is going because then I'm gonna to need to sort the programming out on these so that the servo goes from down to up when the button is pressed and not up to down if that's the case right now, which I don't actually know. So that is the next step. And the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna power the receiver and then I should be able to, ah. Okay, so we've gone the wrong way currently. We actually need to go the other direction. So that's zero and that's 90 currently, but I probably need to go from 90 to zero, I think. Obviously the position of this little flag will change because uh, I can literally just like take it, well, when I put the servo arm on, I can have it laying down. So really all I worry about is when I press the button, which direction is the flag moving. And in this case, it's gone the wrong way. Okay, that is sorted now, so we can carry on with the rest of the build. For now, I'm just gonna put a little short servo horn on here. I'm not sure it's gonna be enough to raise and lower the arm, but I will print another one of these later. But it's not hugely important right now because, I mean, realistically, the weapon isn't even really involved in the driving, and the driving is the thing that we're actually here to test. So we're just gonna power on through. Anyway, I'm gonna finish up this robot and then we need to make an actual controller. So we have laser cut parts, but we also have other bad laser cut parts because apparently this project has decided to fight me every step of the way and the laser didn't quite make it through the first cuts that you guys actually saw on camera, so I had to turn around and do that all over again. Now, as is kind of a thing I've done in the past on this channel, normally you would turn around and you would wood glue all of this stuff together, you would leave it clamped up for like a day or so, I don't have time or the patience for any of that, so we are going to sit all of this together and then we are going to super glue it together, and that is going to be good enough for us, really. Because uh, realistically, all this is, is a test piece, so it doesn't actually matter if it breaks in a day or so. Because uh, if I do end up using this thing, I will be building a better box for it than this. So a bit of a lesson learned from putting this thing together. The joystick that I've got has uh, plugs on it and that make it really, really difficult to get to bolts, especially the ones up the front here. I'll need to make sure I've got extra holes and also probably try and buy one that doesn't use the kind of spade connectors. They just get in the way a lot, but it's fairly stable uh, with just the two bolts. So I'm gonna run this for testing. So after a little bit of time, I have fixed a few bugs in the code here, Got 
everything set up so we can actually drive around a little bit. And I've set up a little slalom course to see how this actually controls. Uh, and I will then run squeak through this in a minute as a point of comparison between uh, this and actual controllers. All right, so we're gonna attempt this entire course. The whole point is to kind of snake the way up around the back cone and then down through and stop at those cones. So three, two, one. Uh, that's one cone here. <laughs> ah, wrong way. All right, that wasn't too bad. Let's set up for squeak. Cool, with Squeak set up, we are ready to go. So this is proportional control using a Flysky controller as usual. For some reason, this side drive is sticking a little bit today. I don't know what that is, but we're gonna give it our best shot with this. So three, two, one. Well, okay. Yeah, that side drive being down does not help at all. I mean, Squeak can also move faster and is slightly bigger apparently, so it can't go through that gap, but... Come on, come here. <laughs> so, that was fairly interesting. Weirdly, the results here are kind of comparable. I mean, Squeak uh, was running at full speed because I could actually th push the throttle up to full speed. With the joystick, I have set the speed to about a half of maximum speed at any given time, uh, at least for the forwards and backwards, and then the turn is about a third. And I think actually what I realized is that it is the speed that dictates the control much, much more than the input mechanism because having this speed set lower actually meant I had a little bit more control on the turning than I did with Squeak. I mean, I also had the other problem of Squeak not fitting through the cones that I'd set up. That one is definitely on me and uh, I could have done that a little bit better. Uh, and also, yeah, Squeak's tire not quite right. I think that's just the motor mount in there is just a little bit skew if and not letting the motor touch the ground properly. But honestly, this was not as wild and uncontrollable as I thought. It turns out that clicky button control isn't actually... It's not bad. I mean, especially if you slow everything down and let the robot drive at a slower speed. I think if I'd let uh, this drive at full speed off the click buttons, it would be entirely uncontrollable. But uh, with what this is going to be used for eventually, because I do have a plan for this particular joystick setup uh, in the future, a little bit slower is actually probably going to be better, all things considered. So... I'm pretty happy with that. That worked. It showed me that, yes, this is a viable enough control scheme to run a robot with. So uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I hope you have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video.